This artwork, I was chasing certain qualities that I wanted to encapsulate with metal. I really wanted the artwork to uh, convey choppiness. So if you think of the ocean on a windy day, I just wanted to take that slice of the top of the ocean with that choppy water and present that in the gallery. Um, not literally trying to be just like the ocean, but I really liked the idea of conveying something that was turbulent and that had peaks and troughs. And I wanted the artwork to be a dense mass of material. And I was interested in those qualities because I associate them with a few things. One is emotions. I think water is a great way to draw analogies between our own emotional states and uh, thought waves or uh, different inner states. But also because I'm really interested in visualising unseen qualities like sound. And when I look at the ocean on a choppy day, it makes me think of noise. I think of it being like a visual noise. So that's partly what this artwork is about. It's about visualising a white noise. So on the Gold Coast, we hear that drone of the ocean all the time. Sometimes we don't notice it, but it's always there. And the closer you get, to the ocean, the more distinct the sound becomes, the more you hear individual waves. And I wanted this artwork to be a bit like that. So the closer you got to it, the more you could see individual qualities, but the further back you get, the more it's like a big drone, a big mass of noise or visual noise uh, and material. So the way that I start making an artwork or the inspiration that comes to me when I uh, develop an idea is I think of a quality. Usually, rather than conveying a big concept, my work's not really narrative. It's about encapsulating certain qualities and then intensifying them or concentrating on them. And uh, for instance, I might focus on the quality of a certain sound or I might focus on the quality of a movement or the quality of an energy. So this is a great starting point if you don't know uh, how to make an artwork or if you don't know what you want to make to just start with this as a foundation. So thinking of a quality or an energy that you want to encapsulate. So I would start by just doing a mind map. So I would write a keyword down. For instance, it might be waves. That's the energy that I want my artwork to encapsulate. And then I would start to think of what are the qualities of waves. So it might be uh, crashing and that breaking and swell. And I can think about waves in terms of it having peaks and then depression, so troughs. And if I think about a, a, a mass of water, it's, uh, it's a big scale, it's large, it's dense, it's wide. So I'm just breaking down uh, a quality into these adjectives. So that's a great place to start. And then I would think, right, what are some visual qualities about this energy that I wanna encapsulate? For instance, uh, waves, what do they look like? Do they have, um, what color are they? Do they move in swells? Are they cyclical? Uh, is there a particular line to it? You know, so I break down these qualities into certain elements. What shape, what texture? Uh, does it have a volume to it? Is it thin or heavy? So I use these keywords. Uh, I'll just write a few down now, like heavy and it's mass and there is a horizon line. And now what I have is a description of what I want the artwork to be like. I can think of certain terms that translate from language into something visual. So I use this as the starting point for making an artwork.
So next, I've got these keywords and I wanna turn these into something visual. So I like to start by just making a drawing, but the drawing isn't necessarily an artwork and it doesn't need to be resolved and you don't need to have a background in drawing to be able to do it. It's a drawing in the same way that writing words on a piece of paper is a sketch. It's just for planning. So I will take some of these keywords and I'll think about which ones can I translate into line and shape and texture. So if I'm thinking about waves, like I was for my artwork in solid gold, I've worked on creating a sense of linearity. I was thinking about there being waveforms and ripples, about there being high parts and low parts. And so I just create a bit of a sketch to give me something to work with. Now this sketch, as I said, it's not a resolved artwork. It's just an idea that's been jotted down. Um, sometimes if you can't think of how to translate something from a word into a drawing, it's good to just shut your eyes and work, uh, work blindfolded or work with your eyes shut because that takes the pressure off you planning the drawing or thinking about how it looks and instead it directs your focus into just thinking about qualities or movements or gestures without any pressure. So if you don't like drawing, I recommend just shutting your eyes and just approaching it from a different point of view. So this drawing that I've got now gives me some ideas for a structure for a sculpture. So that's the next part for this, uh, this tutorial, is then thinking of how we can translate the drawing into something 3D. So really everything I'm describing is a process of translation, a translation of an idea or a quality into a word, translating words into drawings, and then translating drawings into structures. So the drawing becomes for me at least, a plan for a sculpture. And I've got some materials that I have found are really versatile for just uh, experimenting with how to turn something 2D into something 3D. So all you really need is some foil, just kitchen foil, and maybe some wire. And sometimes having something to have as a platform can be quite useful. You don't need to, but styrofoam is great for pushing uh, the material into if you want to have some sort of structural foundation. And uh, just look at the qualities in the drawing, break it down again into those key elements and then think what will translate? What can I use from this to turn into something sculptural? So in my drawing, I've got these repeated wavery lines. So for instance, I could use the foil crush it and then bend it and twist it to create a 3D drawing with twisting, wavery, crumpled peaks and troughs. And I can then use the pin to secure that in place. And in my drawing, I have those lines repeated over and over again. So I could turn this into another form of repetition by taking that same structure and building up a mass. This is how I worked to create the idea for solid gold. So I actually started out with sketches that I uh, used to convey my idea to other people. And then eventually I made a maquette so that uh, I could convey to everyone involved, how I wanted the work to look, what it would be made from, what it would feel like, the color of it, the structure of it. So for the maquette, I use the same material, the same aluminium that I did for my, that would be for my main artwork in solid gold. I did a scaled down version of it. This represents the lengths of the aluminium. I crumpled it to be like my drawing. And then I repeated it over and over again. And these individual parts, the individual lines of the drawing, the individual rows of aluminium, then accumulated together into a mass, into one resolved artwork. So the important thing to remember is that in this process of translation, some things can carry across and some things don't. 
So it's important to be flexible and to go with the material. And if you depart from your initial drawing or your initial ideas, that's okay. And it's also okay if you don't work like this at all. Sometimes I work in the exact opposite order, so I know the sculptural outcome that I want, and I backtrack and then create markets and drawings to then uh, resolve installation problems. So it doesn't necessarily have to happen in this order and it doesn't have to be this rigid, like in compartments, but I just find that breaking it down into these steps of brainstorming, keywords, sketching, and then sculpting uh, can really help to build an idea from nothing.